Hi and welcome back. Today we are going to talk about tile maps. How to use tiles to draw a map for our game. Using tile map isn't very hard and it will take only a few minutes. However, we are doing this tutorial separately from the other videos, so we don't have to talk about how to use tile maps when we are facing more complex topics. Let's see how to do it this. Let's start adding to our project the tile map. Tile map. And let's place it here. Construct two loads by default this map, and this is the one that we are going to use today. You can import the tile map of your game from here. And uh, let's close now this window for the moment. In case you don't see this window here, that is the tile map window, go here on view and tick the option tile map bar and it will show up down here. Let's check some of the properties of the tile map object. Here you can see the settings for the dimension of a tile, 32 by 32 pixels. It's a, that's basically a square of a tile, as you can see here, one of this one. So this is set it as a 32 part 32. You can adjust the tile dimension as you prefer. For example, you, I can change it to 16 by 16. And uh, here we can see the update di tile dimension that let us choose a smaller area. Try to set up the tile dimension as you have a planet when creating the tile map so that everything will be much more comfortable to use. Let's now see how to use these tools. Clicking on this arrow, we leave the tile map editor and we go back to use Construct 2 as usual. To go back to the tile map tools, just click on the tile map object and go back to the tile map bar. Now its tools will be active again. The first tool we can see is the pencil. With this, we can select a single tile and draw it on the tile map. With the rectangular, we can instead select uh, more than one tile at the same time. We can use it to paint uh, large areas holding down the left button of the mouse and we can see as the, the left side is repeated because the drawing area is larger than the selection. This tool is also useful if you want to select a big area and then draw it all together with a single click using the pencil. This is very useful when you might have a particular design that is composed of multiple tiles. Every time you draw on the tile map, you are going to replace the tile that was already there. Everything is just a single tile map object. You don't create multiple separate tile objects. If you have made a mistake, go on the erase tool. In this case, I'm going to delete a big area. This because I still have the select area from before. If I want instead to delete a single tile, I just click on a single tile, it will remove only one cell at a time. And let's see, one by one here. Another thing we can also use to help us to draw, especially when the game area is very large, is to enable here the grid. In this case, it is already set up for cells of 32 by 32 pixels, so we leave it in this way. Now we know exactly where to draw. It might seem a little bit silly to enable it, however, if we go on the layout and the project and we set a bigger dimension, you can see how this can help us to plan and to draw better. Let's set up a wide area. Yeah, you can see now you can have a better plan how to draw and make a better calculation. So let's go back uh, as it was before and let's continue from here. Let's talk about why to use a tile map. We use it because it will help to speed up all the drawing calls the computer has to handle. For example, if I would have a single sprites for each one of these cells, every time the computer must draw one of these, it has to go to read on the code, how to draw, and then come back to perform the action. One by one, just I want to see what there is here, go to read the code, then come back here and draw. And so 
this for the cells and it takes a lot of time. We have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are 60 calls that the computer has to do back and forward to understand how to draw the scene. So it's a very time consuming for the computer. Let's make a practical example. Let's use a tile to fill all the tile map. Let's use this one. With the rectangle, I fill everything. Here, by the way, if you aren't able to place a tile, it's because it has to be large enough to contain it. Expand the tile map to solve the issue. And in this way. Now we can just pull it back a little bit. I was saying, in this case, I have used a single tile that has been repeated in all the area. The computer goes only one time to read how I has to draw the tile and then repeat the structure in each line, filling everything. So it is only one call instead of 60, and this will speed up a lot the game itself. Tile maps are useful when the tiles we are going to place have other adjacent ones on the same tile. Now I'm going to create a quick map to understand better how it works. I take this chance to thank all the people that support me on Patreon. If you don't know Patreon, you can check the link in the description. You can see there all the things that I'm working on. In few words, it's a way to support all the projects that the various creatures works on. You can in this way help your favorite one to keep creating the contents that you love. In my case, you help me to create more tutorials or more uh, tools that you can use to develop games. I will talk better about this another time in another video. Now I try to concentrate and finish this map a little bit quickly, so we can move on. So as you can see, it's just uh, quite straightforward uh, draw with tile maps. You just need uh, to pick the tiles you want and place it. If you have already one um, design sketch somewhere, it's much easier to follow. In this case, I just uh, made it up everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, I cover everything now. I will put this sign again. Nearly finish, and then we can move on. Uh, yeah, I think it's fine for now. Okay, let's move on. And um, wait, maybe I I create a sprite so it's easier to follow what I'm talking about. Let's make it uh, yellow, a little bit transparent. Okay, so let's make this more and uh, let's leave it for one moment here. So in this case, what happens? The computer sees the identification number of the, this tile and checks if it has another one of the same type next to it. It checks uh, left, right, up and down. And then uh, let's put this size 32 by 32 so you can see. So the computer, when it sees this Thalia, makes a draw call, goes to read the code and then come back to draw. Then it goes to the second tile. It is a different one from before, but this one is repeated for four times. The four it will make a single call to the code, read how to draw the tile, draws, and then repeat it for a total of four times. So here, instead of having five calls in total, we have only two, one for the first tile and another one for the second that is repeated. This translates in less workload for the computer. The same things apply to this tile here that is single. The four will be just a single call, while these here are four repeated. Unfortunately, it doesn't repeat the second line as well, because the sign tile is different. The four constitute what does. It tries to optimize the number of draw calls. In this case, probably, it will make a call for these two tiles here because they are next to each other 
Keep in mind that you can make only rectangular as group shape. Then we'll call this by itself, and then we'll call this for four times. This and this uh, will be single calls, as well as these, because they don't have other similar tiles next to them. The same thing applies here. This tab will be a single call, while here we have uh, 3 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Instead of 15 times, with a single call, it will draw this big area. This is why you should use time up when you can, because they optimize the game speed. In addition, time ups are also useful to draw levels. It is very easy to adjust the design of a layout with just one click. So, for example, I just choose this tile and I decide where to put it, just with one click is done. Now, let's move on and see the other tools we can use with the time up. Flip is a useful tool to use with the tiles. When you select it, you can decide to flip the image you are going to draw in a horizontal or vertical. Let's say I want to make this cactus appear different from the other one. Once I click it on flipping horizontal, even if I don't see any difference on the, my tile map, when I move the mouse around, I can see a preview of the tiles showing the mirror cactus. And then I can just place it here normally. Same thing when I flip it in vertical. In this case, the image is flipped both horizontally and vertically. This will let you do not only a flipped image, as for example, a level with a stalactites and stalagmites, using just a single image and mirror it in different ways. You can just mirror it up and down and left and right. But it will also let you create tiles that might not be present in your tile set. For example, if I have only this corner and not the other three, I can flip in it in a way that matches the missing pieces. So if I put this one here, and then I flip, I can create the other corners. This is related to how you plan your tiles. They need to be seamless in order to combine well with the other tiles. This is, however, something more related to the art side rather than just this use of a time map. So now I have taken other tiles here, no flip, and as you can see, here is matching well, for example. So it really, it's up to the artist in this case. Okay, I think that we can stop here for this introduction to the time map. I will explain better in the next videos how to create more exciting things. This is just a base to help to have a smoother explanation when we talk about more complicated things. I don't have to explain to you how to create the time map. You can just come back here if you need and you can refresh your mind about something. Thank you again for your support. If you find the video useful, like it and if you are not subscribed yet, subscribe and click on the bell to receive notification about the new videos. See you for the next video. Bye!